Johnson is a lecturer on U.S. politics at Queen Mary University of London, and he joins us live from Oxford, England. Thank you so much for being here with us. So in Detroit yesterday, uh, President Biden was fiery. He showed a lot more of the fight the Democrats have been hoping to see from him. His campaign says they need to see him in front of folks in order to, to convince everybody that he's up to it. But will that be enough? Well, the Biden campaign has certainly been in survival mode since the debate. And quite frankly, I do think that the Biden campaign has done everything that it could reasonably be expected to do to try to put aside concerns about President Biden. Uh, they've had him out on the campaign trail. They've had him do one on one interviews. They've had him do press conferences. They've had, had him write a letter. They've had him um, shore up elected officials like Senator Fetterman, who want to support him and, and speak out in favor of him. Um, the question you ask, though, is, is, is it enough? Uh, that still remains to be seen. Joe Biden is in the driving seat on this. He, it is ultimately uh, his decision, in effect, whether or not he will carry on, uh, barring an extraordinary move under the 25th Amendment to actually remove him from the presidency. Um, and he has 99% of the delegates at the convention next month. So uh, ultimately, I think the question is, Will the pressure be so much that Biden feels um, unable to continue? Uh, but at the moment, we're not getting any indication that that is his feeling. Yeah, and on, on the pressure, I mean, we have, on one hand, Democrats like Senator John Fetterman, as we just heard, coming out to defend the president. But every day, the trickle of Democrats in Congress calling for him to step down is increasing. But why do you think the dam hasn't broken yet? Well, I think part of it is actually there are people around President Biden who are thinking about Donald Trump in 2016. And in 2016, when that Access Hollywood video came out and there were those uh, awful comments that Donald Trump said about women, um, many elected officials uh, in the Republican Party, uh, including very senior members of the Republican Party, uh, called on him to, to stand aside. And uh, Trump's closest advisors told him to, to stick it out, and he stuck it out and he won. And I guess the key thing, or the most interesting thing that Biden said with respect to this question at the NATO press conference was he's looking at the polls. And the polls can tell you different things, but one thing the polls are showing is that in spite of the debate and all that we've heard about doubts about Joe Biden from senior Democrats in the last uh, two weeks, it remains a dead heat. And, and Biden's going to continue to point to that as justification for him staying in. Yeah, it's surprising that there, there hasn't maybe been more uh, movement on the polls showing how entrenched both sides are here. So turning to, to Donald Trump and the Republican National Convention in Mo Milwaukee next week, what, what's at stake here for, for Trump? What will you be watching for? His, his vice presidential pick, of course? Absolutely. The vice presidential pick will be a big part of the, the news cycle in the coming week. Uh, the last couple of weeks have felt rather strange. This presidential contest has very much felt uh, for the last, well, really since it began as the, as the Donald Trump show. And he's dominated uh, most of the news coverage. Part of that has, in fact, been because of his legal troubles. But Trump seems to take a view that... Uh, any uh, press coverage, even negative press coverage, is good press coverage. Uh, and yet, for the first time, really, in this in this campaign, we've had two weeks where very little has been said about Donald Trump, and the focus has been on Joe Biden. This week, we'll put the focus back on uh, on Donald Trump. Um, and you know, in, in a way, I'm not sure. Oddly enough, I think for the first time, perhaps in his political career, Trump might not welcome that so much because I think that he has welcomed the internal divisions in the Democratic Party. And actually, even in his, his campaign speeches, uh, Trump has not spoken as much about Joe Biden's um, age or health uh, as you might expect. Of course, he raises it, but he doesn't make it uh, the, uh, the dominant theme of his, uh, of his discussions. He's just been allowing the Democrats basically to, to tear themselves out apart and, and stand aside. He won't be able to do that this week with the convention. All right, we'll be watching. Always appreciate your analysis. Richard Johnson in Oxford, England. Thank you so much. Thank you.